I want to give all praise and glory unto Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Ba'ashem, ha Raka Kodash. Double honors to the other apostles of Great Millstone for teaching us this truth. And also I want to acknowledge all the Akiyam pushing this truth with sincerity. All right, so the Spirit today has me in uh, Genesis 22, and um, I'm going to go ahead and start it. It says, And it came to pass after these things that Yahweh did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here I am. All right, let's pull out a precept. Go to Hebrews. And this is uh, the story of where Abraham uh, was going to sacrifice his only son, Isaac. All right. And um, as we read this chapter, you know, it gives you a lot of clues on um, the fact that Isaac was, uh, you know, regenerated, you know, as uh, Yahweh Shai. And also Solomon, right? And Melchizedek. But this account with uh, in chapter 22, you know, it gives you uh, some understanding on uh, on that Yahweh Shai and Isaac were the same soul. Um, you know, and I lack all of the understanding on the regeneration dealing with Isaac and Yahweh Shai. The elders, you know, have greater understanding than I. But, you know, this this uh, chapter goes in on it a little bit, I noticed. And you could see the uh, you could see the understanding and the truth on how Yahweh Shai and Isaac were the same soul. But this is Hebrews 11 and 17. And it says, by faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac, and he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son. All right. And in the same fashion that Abraham, at this time, Isaac was Abraham's only begotten son. Let me keep reading. Verse 18. Of whom it was said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called. All right. So it's through Isaac that the Israelites were um, came about. Okay, Edom came, the Edomites came out of Isaac too, but that was the bad seed, right? The left hand. Jacob was the good seed, the right hand side showing the balance. Um. <clears throat> Well, let's, let me keep reading this. Accounting, this is 19. Accounting that Yahweh was able to raise him up even from the dead, from whence also he received him in a figure. All right. And, and, you know, our people have been dead to the truth, but Yahweh is the one who raises us up to understand this, this uh, Bible. Um, verse 20. By faith... <laughs> Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. By faith, when he was a dying, blessed both of the sons of Joseph and worship leaning upon the top of his staff. All right, so, and this is going into the faith, right? The, the faith of Abraham. I'm going to go back to uh, Genesis 22. Because that's how Abraham was blessed through his faith. In the same way, the men of the Lord, you know, we're going to be blessed if we endure to the end. All right. So let me go back to Hebrew. I'm sorry. Genesis 22. We're on verse two. And he said, take now thy son, thine only son, Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah and offer him there for a burnt offering upon the mountains, which I will tell thee of. All right, so let's go to a precept. Showing you, um, let me see, Second Chronicles 3 and 1. 
Then Solomon began to build the house of the Lord at Jerusalem in Mount Moriah, where the Lord appeared unto David his father in the place that David had prepared in the threshing floor of Ornan the Jebusite. All right, so in this place, Moriah, that's which is in Jerusalem, you know, is showing you here where the, it was the same place where uh, Isaac was to be offered up, you know. And then Solomon built the temple. And then later on, Yahweh Shai was the, uh, was the sacrificial lamb. You see? And those three are all um, the same soul through the regeneration. Not to, you know, forget out, leave out Melchizedek, but I'm going in on Isaac, Solomon, and Yahweh Shai. All right. So now we can go to John. So that, that was the, uh, you know, Moriah was where the altar was built. Also, I believe when he says the house of God, that's referring to the tabernacle, meaning the temple that Solomon built. So John 3, 16 is another precept. For Yahweh so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but having everlasting life. All right. So that was his only begotten son, Yahweh Shai. And we were dealing with um, Isaac was Abraham's only begotten son. Okay. At that time. So let's go back to. You know, and that, that shows you that it, that world in John 3.16 is dealing with Israel, all right? Because this covenant is with Isaac, and the the good seed is Jacob. It's not dealing with Esau and the heathen or the other nations, okay? Only Israelites have the Father always known, you know? The heathen have never been part of the precepts. The laws, the commandments. That's why the heathen are, you know, they're abominations. They're useless to, to the Lord and to this truth. Back to Genesis 22. I'm on verse 3. <clears throat> and Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son and clave the wood for the burnt offering and rose up and went into the place of which Yahweh had told him. So they're going to that place, Moriah. And that's also the same place where, you know, Solomon built the house of, of God. And, um, you know, also, you know, where Yahweh Shai dwelt in Jerusalem, Moriah is is uh let me see I actually got it pulled up here Mount Moriah see so it says the temple of Solomon was built in Mount Moriah so <clears throat> it's showing you that all three of those men were the same soul you had Isaac, Solomon, and Yahweh Shai. And like I said, the elders could give an even deeper breakdown than what I'm giving. But this is just through the Spirit. I, I started to uh, read this and, um, you know, breaking it down. This is Genesis uh, 22 and 4. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off, dealing with uh, Mount Moriah. Um, verse 5, And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide ye here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac his son, and he took the fire in his hand and a knife, and they went both of them together. All right, so let's go to a precept, John again. 19, 
17. It says, and he began, I'm sorry, and he bearing his cross went forth into a place called the place of a skull, which is called in Hebrew, Golgotha, all right, where they crucified him and two other with him and on either side one and Yahawashai in the midst. And Pilate wrote a title and put it on the cross and the writing was Yahawashai of Nazareth, the king of the Jews. All right, so this is dealing with his crucifixion, and it was a sacrifice. He was the sacrificial lamb, and, you know, Ecclesiastes, let me see if I can pull it. Let me see, Ecclesiastes, I think it's seven. Bear with me. Okay, I was trying to look for this. Ecclesiastes 3. Um, let me see where I want to start. Basically showing that there's a time for everything, okay? And also that... Every, there's nothing new under the sun, all right? Let's see. Okay. <clears throat> I'll just read um, verse 3 and 14 in Ecclesiastes. Or I'm sorry, 15. That which hath been is now, and that which is to be hath already been, and Yahweh requireth that which is past. So I'm telling you that, hey, everything is a cycle, you know, nothing new under the sun. Um, let me see, bear with me. Well, verse 15 is the best I can remember. But it says, That which hath been is now, and that which is to be hath already been, and Yahara require with that which is past. So showing you, Isaac was about to be sacrificed by Abraham through Abraham's faith. And then when we go into, uh, you know, John 19, 17, it shows you that uh, Yahweh Shai was sacrificed, you know, took his cross. But the sacrifice in uh, Genesis 22 with Abraham was going to deal with a, uh, a knife because Abraham was going to plunge the knife into Isaac's chest as a sacrifice. So I'm going to go back to that. That shows you that the truth is more important than your family members. You see, because he was going to kill his only uh, his only begotten son because of his faith. So we go to Genesis. Let's see. <clears throat> we'll go at seven. And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father and said, "My father." And he said, "Here I am." <clears throat> My son, and he said, Behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? So Isaac asked Abraham, he's like asking him, Where is the lamb? You know, you got the wood and, and the altar getting prepared, but where's the lamb? And verse 8 And Abraham said, My son, Yahweh will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together. I'm going to go to John again. One twenty nine, And it says, The next day John seeth Yahweh Shai coming unto him and said, Behold, the Lamb of Yahweh, 
which take away the sin of the world, meaning the world of Israel, all right? Verse 36, And looking upon Yahweh Shai, as he walked, he said, Behold, the Lamb of Yahweh. All right, so that's the precept, because showing you back in Genesis 22 and verse 8, it says, I'm going to read it again. And Abraham said, My son, Yahweh will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together. So you see, Abraham knew that Isaac was the, the, uh, was the sacrificial lamb. You know? And he said, Yahweh is going to provide him a lamb, you know? Dealing with prophecy also because Yahweh Shai was the sacrificial lamb, you know, in in uh, that we read about in uh, John. John nineteen. All right, so back to uh, verse nine. And they came to a place which Yahweh had told him of, and Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order and bound and bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of Yahweh called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest Yahweh seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. All right? So that shows you, that shows you the, the faith of Abraham, our forefather, you know? And it shows you the parallels between Isaac and Yahweh Shai because they were the same, they were the same soul through the regeneration. But Christians, they can't understand that, you know? Let me go to these precepts real quick. G Genesis 16, and we'll go to 7. It says, The angel of Yahweh found her by a fountain of water in the wilderness by the fountain in the way up shore, to shore. Verse 9, the, And the angel of Yahweh said unto her, Return to thy mistress and submit thyself unto her hands. And the angel of Yahweh said unto her, I will multiply thy seed exceedingly, that it shall not be numbered for the multitude. So, this is dealing with Hagar. All right? Because she was being tormented by Sarah and the way she was treating her. But the angel of the Lord told her to return. And just like in uh, Genesis 22, the angel of the Lord told Abraham, you know, lay not thine hand, let's go to it, verse 12, lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him, for thou know, or for now I know that thou fearest Yahweh, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son from me. All right? And so Abraham was blessed with, you know, the father of all nations. Even the heathen nations, but as you know, we know in the apocrypha, it even tells you that um, hey, that the rest of these nations are are nothing to Yahweh. You know, they're likened unto spittle, meaning nothing. You know, but the nation of Israel, which we read about in uh, what was it? Hebrews 17 and 18, it said, Isaac shall thy seed be called, okay? Let me see, I'm trying to find. Oh, man. <clears throat> Well, it's not coming to me through the Spirit, so I'm going to go ahead and just close out on that. But 
you know, in the same way our forefather Abraham had faith, you know, Yahweh blessed him. That's how we have to be coming into these last days where this devil is going to, you know, try and put a microchip in you. You're going to have to have faith. You know, the kind of faith that Abraham did where he was ready to slay his son Isaac, you know. The kind of faith Yahweh Shai had where he was, uh, you know, ready to take his uh, crucifixion like a man, you know. The kind of faith that King Solomon had, you know, building the temple. And praying for wisdom to, to guide uh, the, the sons of Israel. So, with that, I want to give all praise and glory unto Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Harakak Kodash. Double honors goes out to the elder apostles of Great Millstone for teaching us this truth. And also want to acknowledge the Akiam for pushing this truth with sincerity in Babylon, America. Shalom to the elect. May you endure to the end. Shalom.